Have you ever wondered why the rich keep getting richer, while the poor seem to struggle more with each passing year? It's a question that stirs the mind, doesn't it? This is the reality of wealth and income inequality, a pressing issue that continues to widen the gap between the haves and the have-nots globally. Let's dive deeper to understand the mechanics behind this phenomenon. First, we need to understand the role of a central bank in an economy. Let's dive into that. Imagine the central bank as the bank of banks, a sort of financial superhero that keeps the economic universe in balance. Its powers are vast and varied, but let's focus on three main ones. Firstly, it's the central bank that creates and issues our currency. Every note and coin you've ever held was born in the vaults of the central bank. It's like the mint of the nation, churning out the physical representation of our economic work. Secondly, the central bank controls the money supply. Think of it like a tap. Sometimes, to stimulate economic activity, it needs to open the tap wide and let the money flow. This is what we call expansionary monetary policy. But other times, when the economy is overheating, it needs to tighten the tap, restricting the money supply, a policy we refer to as contractionary. Lastly, the central bank implements monetary policy, which is a fancy way of saying it sets the interest rate. That's right, the interest rate on your savings account, your home loan, your car loan, all of it is influenced by the central bank's decisions. In essence, it's like the puppet master pulling the strings of the financial market. But why does it do all these things? Well, its mission is to maintain price stability, keep employment high, and ensure the economy is humming along nicely. It's a delicate balancing act that requires constant monitoring and adjustment. So why should you care about the central bank? Well, its actions impact your everyday life. From the price you pay for a cup of coffee to the interest rate on your savings to the value of your house, the central bank's fingerprints are all over it. In the grand scheme of things, the central bank is like the conductor of an orchestra, ensuring all the instruments play in harmony to create a symphony of economic stability and growth. So, essentially, the central bank has a significant control over the economy. It's the unseen force that keeps our economic ship sailing smoothly through the stormy seas of global finance. Next, let's talk about inflation. What is it exactly and why does it matter? In simple terms, inflation is the general increase in prices and decline in the purchasing value of money. Imagine this, if last year you could buy a basket of apples for $5 and this year, the same basket costs $6, that's inflation. The price of the apples has inflated, and your $5 can't purchase as much as it could before. Now you might be wondering how do we measure inflation? Well economists typically use a tool called the Consumer Price Index or CPI, which tracks the prices of a basket of consumer goods and services over time. If the CPI is rising, it means we're experiencing inflation. Inflation is like a double-edged sword. On one hand, mild inflation is considered normal in a growing economy. It can encourage spending and investment, which in turn stimulate economic growth. After all, if you knew the price of that new car you've been eyeing is likely to go up next year, you might be motivated to buy it sooner. On the other hand, high inflation rates can erode the buying power of consumers, especially those on fixed incomes. If prices rise too quickly, your salary or savings might not keep up, making it harder for you to afford the things you need or want. It's like running on a treadmill that's constantly speeding up. You have to run faster just to stay in the same place. Inflation can also create uncertainty in the economy, which can hinder long-term planning and investment. If businesses aren't sure what their costs will be next year due to unpredictable inflation, they might be less likely to invest in new projects or hire more workers. So, inflation impacts everyone, from the individual consumer to the large corporation. And while it's a complex topic with many factors at play, understanding the basics can help you make more informed decisions about your personal finances and investments. Remember, inflation doesn't mean that all prices are increasing, just that the overall trend is for prices to go up. So, we know what inflation is, but what about the inflation rate? The inflation rate in simple terms is the percentage increase in the general level of prices for goods and services from one period to the next. It's kind of like taking the pulse of an economy. Just as your pulse rate can give an indication of your physical health, the inflation rate can give an indication of the economic health of a nation. Typically measured over a year, the inflation rate can tell us how much the cost of living has increased over that time. For example, if the inflation rate is 3%, then a pack of gum that cost $1 last year would cost about $1.03 this year. 
But why does the inflation rate matter? Well, central banks use the inflation rate to make important decisions about monetary policy. If the inflation rate is too high, the central bank might increase interest rates to slow down the economy and bring inflation under control. On the other hand, if the inflation rate is too low, the central bank might lower interest rates to stimulate economic activity. The inflation rate also influences the interest rates that we see as consumers and investors. When the inflation rate is high, you might see higher interest rates on your savings account or your mortgage. When the inflation rate is low, those interest rates might be lower as well. But it's not just about prices and interest rates. The inflation rate can also affect things like wages, investment returns, and even the value of money itself. Over time, a high inflation rate can erode the purchasing power of money, meaning your dollars buy less and less. So, as you can see, the inflation rate is a powerful tool that central banks use to guide the economy. It can influence everything from the price you pay for a cup of coffee to the size of your retirement savings. And while it might seem like just a number, it's a number that can have a big impact on your daily life and your future. The inflation rate, therefore, is a crucial factor in determining the economic health of a nation. Now let's move on to appreciating assets. How do they fit into this puzzle? Appreciating assets, in its simplest form, are items that grow in value over time. They are like the golden seeds that, when watered and nurtured properly, can blossom into towering trees of wealth. Let's take a couple of the most common appreciating assets as examples. Real estate and stocks. Real estate, whether it's residential, commercial, or land, often appreciates over time. This means that a house you buy today could be worth significantly more in a decade or two. Homeowners can then sell these properties for a higher price or rent them out, creating an additional income stream. It's like having a goose that lays golden eggs. Stocks, on the other hand, represent ownership in a company. As the company grows and becomes more profitable, the value of its stock typically increases. This means that stockholders can sell their shares for more than they paid, making a profit. Or, they can hold on to their stocks and benefit from dividends, which are portions of the company's profits distributed to shareholders. It's as if you planted an apple tree, and now you're enjoying the fruits of your labor. However, the ability to acquire and grow these assets is often skewed towards those who already have wealth. The initial capital required to invest in real estate or stocks can be substantial, creating a barrier for many. This disparity in access to appreciating assets can exacerbate income inequality. Those who have the means to invest can see their wealth grow exponentially, while those who don't are left to rely on their income alone, which, as we've discussed, is often eroded by inflation. Moreover, the laws and tax policies in many countries are designed to favor those who invest in appreciating assets, further widening the wealth gap. For instance, capital gains taxes which apply to profits from selling assets are often lower than income taxes. Hence, appreciating assets can significantly contribute to wealth and income inequality. So, what does all this mean for wealth and income inequality? Well, let's take a step back and look at the big picture. Our exploration began with understanding the central bank, a key player in the economic landscape. By controlling interest rates and money supply, the central bank indirectly influences our incomes and the value of our money. Then, we delved into the concept of inflation, a general increase in prices over time. Inflation erodes the buying power of money, meaning your dollar today might not buy as much tomorrow. This is particularly harsh on those with fixed or low incomes who can't keep up with rising costs. We also examined the inflation rate, the speed at which prices increase. A high inflation rate can make things worse, as the value of money decreases faster. This again disproportionately affects those at the lower end of the income scale. Lastly, we discussed appreciating assets like real estate or stocks. These assets often increase in value over time, and those who own them can grow their wealth. However, these assets are often out of reach for those with lower incomes, creating a widening gap in wealth and income distribution. In essence, the interplay between these elements, the central bank, inflation, the inflation rate, and appreciating assets, creates a powerful economic current. This current can carry those with assets and high incomes towards increased wealth, while leaving others struggling against the tide. As we can see, these economic factors play a pivotal role in perpetuating wealth and income inequality, contributing to the cycle of the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. 
Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.